welcome to Edgewater, Saskatchewan. This is episode 8. In this episode uh, we cover the next three months, the first two months which are May, uh, June and July I think they are actually. What month is this? Yeah, June and July. <laughs> um, we're very very quiet months. We only had one contract come up available that was for some um, weeding, some spraying of herbicide. So we're just going through our different routines and buying some extra land. So I've bought this little piece of land right next to us, plots 56, where I think I'm going to extend our farmyard and put some production units in there. Not sure it'll be this year or next year, it just depends on how much flex we get. Right, and this is the little contract we did, it was only for 5,000 odd pounds. Just get that all up to the field and I'll show you where it was. Or where it is, should I say. It's still there. But it has been, the weeds have been sprayed off. So I just use the same sprayer, give it a good wash before, uh, after using the liquid fertiliser in it. And off we go. Works quite well, we didn't have didn't use an awful lot, used less than, I think it was less than a thousand litres of herbicide. As you can see, the field is pretty full of weeds, um, and even though we are spot spraying, as you can see by the movement or the jets of spray, it was pretty full on. And that's five thousand that we made, and it was a pretty, pretty quick job, wasn't a very big field to do. And we'll head on back to the farm and then we did all our little bits and pieces of daily routine. We made sure that all our greenhouses were filled, filled up with water because it's going to be pretty busy from August onwards when we have to start Harvesting and plenty of contracts will come up as well. I also decided to purchase field nine with with this purchase I did have to go back to the bank so we utilized the last two fields we bought as Collateral because we paid for those outright and we purchased field nine as well, which has got Lentils in it. The small field that we bought next that also has lentils in it and we'll harvest that as well. I decided to pull up a little shed as well just for the bits and pieces of of um, product that we have left over after fertilizing and spraying off and such like just to keep it under cover. Right so we're now into July as you saw there no contracts available still uh, just did a couple of quick routine operations once again setting a couple of products that we have there and of course we had the the peas to sell a small amount of peas about 12,000 litres of peas so that was a nice little bit of income not a huge amount but Reasonable. It was uh, fourteen thousand. Right, so now we're into August. The work starts. So I've taken on a harvesting contract, wheat field five, big contract. I know it's a big field. We've worked on it before. It's worth about twenty-two thousand. So I'll get this all started, and then. We can work on harvesting our barley fields. Right, so we've 
got that stuff, they've got a worker working on that field and the harvesting of the wheat. Get our swatter, which we haven't done before. The machine has been sitting there patiently waiting since we started. If you remember back, we couldn't uh, swat the contracts. So. Get this connected, come to think of it. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think we can swap barley because it will give. Normally has the ability to swat, so let's get going. Right, so this is the first little problem that I came across. You see, even if you just hit a little bit of grass on the side of the field, it swaths the whole little section as grass, which a little bit difficult because of course you want to keep as close to the edge so uh, inevitably it creates a bit of a problem so I'm not sure exactly why that is but, um, I mean the predominant product is in this case barley but if you hit a bit of grass it all just changes over to grass well I managed to keep it reasonably in check so it's, ne it's not quite clear whether you were losing any barley or not but uh, I would presume you are because as you will see later when you do the collection of the harvester foraging if you want to call it that it doesn't pick up the grass well I set it so that it doesn't pick up the grass should we pick up the grass as well if you are looking to bail or so we'll see what happens because we'll have to bail we'll of course bail the straw that is left after this and sell it nice little byproduct right so I'll just let you watch this at your leisure and We'll get back to you as soon as it's done.
we finished off that field thought it was taking a bit long so it didn't show right to the end but we're going to pick up the foraging unit the collection unit I'm not sure exactly what it's called but um, so as you can see I skipped the grass and made sure that I was collecting the barley and as you can see you'll to see pretty soon the the swath of straw out the back so ideally or one of the advantages of swathing is that you should be getting better healed but one will have to take into account how much longer it takes to do so basically you're doing two passes of the field I'm not sure exactly how much benefit you get in terms of the yield so over time I think I'd have to do a bit of experimenting on that because of course you do the swathing the the header for the swath the swathing machine is fairly narrow it's not too bad although I must say it does have a really really good turning circle so changing of direction at the end of each pass is pretty swift so that does save a bit of time but the fact of the matter is you're still going through the field twice ah one of the first problems that I had I ran out of diesel oh can you believe it in any case so I headed off back down to the store went and picked up a pallet of jerry of um, jerry cans full of diesel and a thousand liters 500 500 pounds it was loaded up the well filled up the harvester got it going again luckily didn't need too much priming and off we went and stick around it's even a bigger problem a little bit later on in this collection phase right so I'm presuming that it doesn't pick up the grass because I set the first product that I put into the forage or harvester should I say and foraging the, the barley was was barley so I'm not going to at this point in time test that theory out but yeah works pretty well seem to be getting fairly good yield of course we didn't plant this field so pretty much a free crop if one wants to call it that we'll put this into the silos and sell it when the price is right unless of course we need the money I would imagine that we we've got a contract that we're busy working on I think you may have noticed that we did a bit of skip in the in the fast play just to go and offload the harvester of this harvester that we did um, in field 5 we've also picked up field 8 now the field right next to it also wheat which we've started we've done about a quarter of a pass but I thought it best to do this job first and then get back to the contract job just because I wanted to do this in the daytime so that I could show you the operation yeah it seems to be working fairly easily because I have sped it up substantially it's only foraging at 7 or 8 miles an hour 
could be, I wonder if that's because the, it looks like it needs a bit of a servicing this. This harvester, so. We'll finish this off first. Could be just that. So I'll just have to let the, the header. There's a lot of work to do. Just got to separate out the barley from the from the straw or the chaff or whatever one wants to call it. We should get quite a few straw bales off this. I'm sure it doesn't. It's not going to bring in huge money, but it will bring in something. Right, keep your eyes peeled now. we get everything and there we go straight into the pond hit the accelerator instead of the brake I think I can't even blame anybody else well this is an opportunity to show you what to do when when you do that so you can just highlight the vehicle in the map view and you get the option to reset it resets back to the to the store then you Go over to your filters and select tools and the tool is also underwater you can reset reset that back to the store and then just hop and back down to the store and collect it of course you lose any crop that you had in the machine luckily we didn't have any crop in the machine because we just emptied it <laughs> so yeah so here we are back and harvesting Right, so we'll take a little break here, let you enjoy the rest of the harvesting here.
so that's it pretty much done field has been harvested swathed harvested and all that's left to do is to bale it right we did uh did harvest our two lentil fields the small one right next to our yard and field nine it was pretty dark so I've just done a quick show of that I must say that the yields were very very low between this field and field 9 got less than 10,000 litres of lentils it does go for a higher price than some of the other crops I think between 1.7 and 2,000 pounds a litre but the yield is so low of course I think this was a free field so could most probably push that up a little bit I think they were most probably sitting at 60 or 70 percent of full capacity of yield so I'm not sure we'll be doing too many lentils on this map stick to our flax so that we can get our clothing empire going. Alright, so there you, there you can see it's not a huge amount. It's both fields done. And this is the first time we empty the harvester and it was nowhere near full. In any case, we'll pop that into our silo. And that's where we're going to end this episode. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next episode. Cheerio!